Hi. Hello. Uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Arthur Rabner. Um, I'm founder of uh, Hypervision. Yes, we doing uh, advanced optics for virtual reality, for future virtual reality. And future is uh, coming. So I just tried it just before, mm -hmm. and it was mind blowing what you're doing in there. Mm -hmm. What's happening? How can you have the vision go all around on the mm -hmm. sides? How does that work? So first of all, the basic uh, is to make this technology. What you see here is the pancake lenses. Pancake lenses. Uh, how how pancake lens works? It's a folding optical path. So instead of a big model, we have a very tiny model. But we also have a proprietary pancake lens design. So we have very big eye box, extended field of view. For the same display size, we have more field of view than others. Uh, so yes, this is a proprietary patented pancake lens model. Uh, now, you ask me about this architecture. So here, for each eye, we have two models. One for central vision and one for peripheral vision. So, and uh, our uh, patent here, how to connect those two models together to have continuous panoramic image. And actually, we covering here completely horizontal field of view of uh, human vision. So, what's the secret? How do you make it? Oh, so the, is it secret? No, no, not secret. It's, it's published, published, right? It's already published, so it's not a secret. So, you, you, you can uh, see here connection between two punk and cleanse models in, uh, on this line. Now, um, from the second side, you have display here and display here. They are not connected. So, but the, uh, the, the recipe is to generate uh, the same uh, image uh, somewhere here and somewhere here. So after uh, manipulation by the lenses, the rays that are going out of this line, those rays are connected. The rays are, that are coming from pixel here and from pixel here, they are connected. So our eye cannot distinguish between this and this pixel. So we see connection between two models. Wow. Can, can you try to hold it like this? Yes. Uh, let me just see if I can capture anything. Is it possible to capture anything? Yeah, if you put your camera to infinity, uh, maybe for, to two meters focus, you will be able to see in focus uh, the image inside. But, uh, not out of focus, but fixed two meter focus. Yeah. All right, I can see a little bit. OK. but. Uh, I mean, it's. Uh, can you hold the camera for one second? Yes. Is it okay if I look in there? Yes. Well, if you can try to film me? Yes. Wow. I'm, uh, I'm totally surrounded by a VR experience that closes and that seems to be smooth. It looks like the whole screen is together all around. It's such a cool, such a cool experience. I feel like I'm uh, looking at the future a little bit, uh, like the future of VR. Are you, you want to have a role to play in uh, the future of VR? We are making future VR, actually. Yes. <laughs> this, uh, this is our role. We already have a client that will use this architecture for advanced uh, flight simulator. Uh, you know, in flight simulators, you need peripheral vision stimulation and that what uh, this architecture is doing. The, the crucial thing about this display industry is to make the second best thing to be there, right? And if you have a VR where you don't have the peripheral vision, yes. it kind of breaks the illusion, right? In like visually you don't feel there as much. But maybe with this you feel even more inside. Like in world. real life, we use our peripheral vision all the time. Right now I'm looking on you, but I feel what is going around me. So the same we need to have in virtual reality. Does it make sense to have it up and down and all? Ah, bigger, bigger vir uh, vertical field of view. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. In, in our next uh, reference design, we are going to increase our vertical field of view. Now it's 95 degrees. We will increase it to 120 degrees. 220? No, no, 120. 120. Uh, 120 degrees vertical field of view. 
right. but we, uh, horizontally we already have 240. Where are you based? In Israel. In Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, how long time you've been working on this? Uh, this idea was from 2016, but uh, we started to work on it actively uh, three years ago. And how has it been here, the display week? You, a lot of people want to see this. A lot, a lot of people, people are yeah. asking to have a look, to figure it out. Yeah, it's uh, no, no, nobody seen this architecture before, so... Actually, so on SPAE AR, we are not long ago, in February, first time we exposed this architecture. So most of people didn't see it uh, and uh, they amazed uh, this it. Did yes. you win the prize? It's not yet announced or announced? Uh, it not yet announced. Uh, not sure that the main focus uh, for this prize is virtual reality. It's more for displaced technologies. So not sure that we will win the prize, but it could be a surprise. There's a lot of rumors on the internet that some company called Apple <laughs> is going to launch some VR, AR thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be, there's already Microsoft tries something, Google maybe will, and Facebook changed the name mm -hmm. to, meta. to VR. To Meta. Uh, uh, yeah, Meta. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what's going to happen in the next two, three years? It depends on 5th of June when Apple, if Apple will finally will release its headset and if it will be good, so other companies that currently are awaiting will go into this industry as well. And in five years, every one of us will use virtual reality to make his life more efficient and more pleased. But Apple doesn't have this. So we wait for 5th of June. All right, it's gonna be exciting mm -hmm. to see uh, and cool. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks. What 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 else in the hardware is here? What is this PCB? What is it? Ah, uh, this off-the-shelf PCB that connects a uh, display port. We have two display ports from here. We connect them to two PCBs here, and each PCB have a bridge to link uh, the two displays. So we have four displays here. So we need two PCBs that uh, connect display port to two MIPI interfaces of the displays. And. Do you like going around here, the display display week, yes. looking at the display makers, see what's available for your next yeah. prototype maybe? Because yeah, we need to uh, cooperate with display makers. We, we mapped uh, the display options and uh, yes, sure, we will cooperate with display makers to put more resolution, more uh, uh, active area of the display to get more field of view. So there's four displays here? Yes. You could have six? No you need. Make it higher? No need six. Just four. Four, four is enough. So four mm. times 4K, right? Uh, In the future. So we need hardware that will drive this four times 4K, but there is a, there are tricks of uh, making decimation or binning of the pixels so to drive less pixels and still to have a very sharp image. What's the resolution now? Uh, right now we put 1.6K displays uh, of 2.1 inch so the resolution is not too high and still you can see very sharp. And in the future, you, you will see it twice sharper. Mm. Hello, I'm Mr. Beast. No, I'm not Mr. Beast actually. But if I was Mr. Beast and if I was sending you a bunch of money, I would use Wise. Wise is a really smart way to send money around the world. Tiny little fees. Check out my video, a seven minute video where I try to explain some more. It works in hundreds of countries. Every time you go to a different country, use your Wise card or use your Android Pay, your, your uh, Apple Pay to do all your payments with a tiny little conversion pay uh, fee. If you have some customers in different countries, they can send you money to local bank accounts in the US and Europe, all over the world. You can get local bank account details. They transfer tiny little fees. Don't use PayPal anymore. Don't use Western Union. Don't use your bank to send money because it's surprising, but you wouldn't know maybe, but they take fees that are gigantic, that are pretty big. Just use the wise. It's smart.